girl fight between Lauren Boebert and Marjorie Taylor Greene, two members of the United States Congress. Footage was caught, here it is. Take your conversations to the back, off the floor. For what purpose does the gentlewoman order, please? For what purpose does the gentlewoman from Florida, Mrs. Luna, seek recognition? They're okay. So, mm, yeah, they called each other the B word, or at least one has confirmed so. Let's put up the picture full mass, I will give you the background. Yes, this is interesting, confirmed. Marjorie Taylor Greene confirmed Wednesday night that she did indeed call Congresswoman Boebert a little B word. She did not say B word. As she doubled down on her remarks, quote, She has genuinely been a nasty little B to me, Green said. Asked whether the two could ever reconcile. The Congresswoman said, absolutely not. Yep, MAGA Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Green and Lauren Boebert have been at war with each other since December. We covered some of that back then. First, Boebert threw Green under the bus in a live TV interview over the latter's belief in Jewish space lasers. A conspiracy theory popularized by, you know, those people, okay? Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene is down uh, with a conspiracy theorist and she promoted the propaganda. There's more. The next month, the two reportedly had it out in a house bathroom, from which Bobert ran out like a little schoolgirl, a source told the Daily Beast. Bobert then mocked the big white balloon Green was carrying around the Capitol on, in February to make some kind of point about the Chinese spy balloon. And that brings us to Wednesday afternoon, when Green reportedly called Bobert a bee to her face on the House floor in front of a bunch of their colleagues. Marjorie Taylor Greene has lost all respect, ladies and gentlemen. No decorum whatsoever. Every politician knows this one thing. You don't do it in front of them. They typically would do it behind your back. Now, Marjorie Taylor Greene has brought the conversation directly to the floor. There's more. According to the Daily Beast, the spat started because both Congresswomen introduced Dueling resolutions, resolutions to do what? To impeach President Joe Biden. Bobert then made a procedural move to force a vote on hers first, thereby stealing Green's impeachment happy thunder. The two were seen arguing on the House floor about the rivalry and a video of the moment made its way to Twitter. Three sources told, The beast that Boebert confronted Green over the statements you made about me publicly. Green replied, according to all three, by calling Boebert a B word with one source specifying that Green said actually uh, used the words little B word. I've donated to you, I've defended you, but you've been nothing but a little B to me, Green told Boebert, per the B source who witnessed the exchange. And you copied my articles of impeachment after I asked you to to, uh, co-sponsor them. An unnamed Republican congressman confirmed to the outlet that they witnessed it too. Quote, I heard Marjorie call Boebert a B word right in front of a face, said the lawmaker, whom the beast granted anonymity so they could speak freely. This is all pretty jaw dropping on its own, but the best part is how the spat reportedly ended, which sounds like a bad high school breakup. I have more in a different context about Pence, but before I go to Pence, please understand the argument has nothing to do with why they are elected to the US Congress. 
They are debating and arguing about shine. Shine, they flexing. They want to be known for one thing while doing absolutely nothing. Impeaching Joe Biden, you're arguing about impeaching Joe Biden. Articles of impeachment, go for it, that's fine. It's your political right to do so, regardless of anyone's belief in the authenticity of your outrage. You can do it. They're arguing about everything but policy. They're arguing about everything but economy, higher education, jobs, skill based training, the affordability of housing, ending homelessness. If you're going to argue on the US Congress floor, please at least argue about stuff somebody gives a damn about. But the reality is, they're not the problem. They are simply an expression, they're a symptom of the sickness that permeates not only inside of Congress, but also from many who live in this nation. We elect people to be representatives, to represent what values, policy. This is foolishness, there's more. Biden, uh, he's running for president again, which means Pence. He's running for president against the Republican primary field. But if he wins, which he won't, he will be running against Biden. (laughs) Meanwhile, during a meet the press interview, Chuck Todd's attempt to pin down Mike Pence on a Trump DOJ indictment derails when one thing is brought up, Hunter Biden. Now, I thought this was settled. Hunter has basically pleaded guilty tax evasion, having a gun illegally. Uh, they didn't get him on the crack pipe. I know Republicans really wanted him to be convicted for the crack pipe. I hope uh, that at some point they will you know, let that rest and let the man move on. It's called a disease, it's an addiction. But this was an interesting dynamic. Mike Pence unable to answer questions, not the first time, here it is. Imagine deciding that you have evidence that yeah, a no. former president commits a crime and you don't charge. Yeah, no. That could be just as damaging to our gold standard rule well, of law example. I, could it not? I think the proper answer right now, because we have an indictment. Mm-hmm. And as I said, the allegations are serious. And um, the proper approach now is for equal treatment under the law. The Department of Justice, uh, I would like to see bring equal vigor to the investigation into allegations around Hunter Biden. How do you I mean, know we have not? investigations you swirling you know around Hunter not? Biden. About, How do you know that they're not doing that right now? Well, I, I, I'm, I want to see them come forward. There's a U.S. attorney with in Delaware that's that been would, looking that into this for quite That would reflect their commitment to equal treatment under the law. And frankly, you know, the fact that, uh, that, that President Biden was found to have had classified documents dating all the way back, not just to his years as vice president, but to his years in the United States Senate, I, I would like to see the Department of Justice moving forward they have vigorously special, they have with that special, He appointed a special counsel. That's equal treatment under the law. So what? So you approve of what Garland did by having a special counsel look into the president? Well, 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 we'll see what happens, Chuck. I mean, the, the American Wait, people. Give me your definition seen, of equal treatment. The American people have seen treatment. so far that the former president has been subject but to there's an There's a indictment. difference between equal treatment and equal outcome. There is a. Perception, Are you looking for Chuck, an equal outcome or Chuck, equal treatment? Chuck, you just get my point. I get your point, and I, I think I'm being very clear on this. I- Pence. Sir, you're clear as mud, there's more, (laughs) here it is. The American people uh, would like to see evidence that we don't have a two-tiered system of justice. Seven years, uh, it it appears as though though Democrats uh, get one level of treatment and and Republicans, especially uh, those of us in the Trump Pence administration, you get another. But and Mr. Vice the President, American people want to, see, want to see action by the Department of Justice that proves to them or starts to prove to them that that's not the case. Did the Sessions tell you, uh, Bar to, Justice Department politicize things in favor of the Democrats? Is that your allegation that in four of the seven years you're describing that the Justice Department that was run by Republican, former Republican Senator Jeff Sessions, two-time Republican Attorney General Bill Barr was politicizing the Justice Department in favor of Democrats? 
What I'm saying to you is that we now know that the Russia collusion investigation should have never been begun. Two and a half years put the country through. Inspector General never said that. In the days following that, under the Biden administration now, we've literally seen the Justice Department targeting parents going to school board meetings. We've seen the Justice Department targeting pro-life activists. And and I, I have to tell you, Chuck, I'm still waiting for the rash of prosecutions of people involved uh, in the BLM riots from the summer of 2020. I mean, where where is the equal treatment under the law as evidence of the fact that, that people are being brought into court, being held before having caused billions of dollars in damage in hundreds of riots throughout the summer of 2020? Look, clearly the American people, or, or not, or I will tell you among Republicans, um, vast majority of Republicans have lost confidence in the Department of Justice. And if I'm elected president of the United States, I've said on day one, we're going to we're going to clean house at the highest levels of the Department of you, Justice. Talk- you won't do a damn thing. Keep in mind, Pence is afraid to simply say the truth about his own political opponent, Donald Trump. Now, I'm connecting what happened with Boebert, Green, and this interview, all of them are making measured decisions based on the potential response of Donald Trump and his followers. Let me say that again, each of them are making measured decisions based on the proximity to their relationship with Donald Trump, they are afraid to go too far to offend him or those who follow him. This is a dangerous thing. Here's what it means. If Pence is afraid to confront the man on camera, if Pence is afraid to confront the man by way of policy proclamation, you elect Pence, who's in control of Pence? The man he's afraid of, that's who's in control of him, all right? Um, Two tier justice system, he said people wanna know we don't have a two tier justice system. We've always had a two tier justice system. And to say that somehow the government has been weaponized against conservatives, please keep in mind, Mike Pence, that literally the government, the very government you once represented has assassinated members of the community who were citizens and left leaning progressive in their ideological beliefs. This government has literally put those individuals to death. We have the evidence, we also have the confessions. Please keep in mind, every single thing that you're saying now is something we've said decades ago about the reality of this nation. You are simply misapplying the facts, but the fact is still there. There is a two tier justice system. All right, your brother thoughts. Mike Pence was alive when Fred Hampton was assassinated. He knows exactly what's yeah. going on. The theme of this opening segment has been at least fight or a lack thereof. And Pence does not have that. He ain't gonna do nothing exactly what you said earlier. By the way, good job out of Chuck Todd asking yeah. follow up questions and actually fighting through that interview because I didn't think he had it in him. Let's go back to MTG right quick because I was looking at it while you were talking. Recently, she had her struggles with Jamal Bowman, AOC, math and science. And I wish Congress (laughs) would continue to fight like that, like before the people, as you alluded to, opposing each other to their faces in order to bring about, I don't know, laws, seeing how they're lawmakers. So more of what we just saw from them, but like, you know, to make people's lives better, you know, the lives of Americans in this country. More of that, please. Nothing, none of this show in order to make uh, Trump's base happy with you. Right. Well said. 